Let us talk a bit more about about the dual function. So, what is the dual function? What is the geometry of the dual function or of the Lagrangian? What is the geometry of the Lagrangian? Okay. So, and now here is one way of so the Lagrangian or and so on all of these appear they make an appearance in problems that are uncon that are constrained, but we can con convert these sort of problems that are that are actually constrained to problems that are unconstrained in the following by doing the following thing. So I I have suppose a problem uh, that I mentioned before which is minimize f x subject to over variables x subject to g i of x less than equal to 0 for all i from 1 to m and h j of x equal to 0 for all j from 1 to p and then I define this as my Lagrangian lambda of x l of x comma theta as f of x plus Right. So, this was my lambda L, L of x um, uh, x lambda theta. Now, suppose I did the following I, I decided uh, I want to express this constrained optimization problem as an unconstrained optimization. How, would, how can I do that? So, to do that let me introduce this, this function, this function let us call this the function i plus. Okay. The function i plus of t, what does this do? This function is 0 minus infinity, it is greater than for t greater than equal to 0, it is 0 and for t strictly less than 0, it is minus infinity. Right? So, i plus of t, how does this look as a function of t? So, here is suppose my t for t strictly less than 0 this guy i plus is uh, equal to 0 change the color for strict say it is this for t is less strictly less than 0 it is it is equal uh, uh, sorry uh, uh, for t strictly less than 0 it is equal to minus infinity right. So, uh, for All right. and for t uh, uh, and for t greater than equal to 0 it is actually equal to 0. So, this is my function i plus. So, it is it is ta it takes value minus infinity when t is less than 0 and uh, and 0 onwards it, it takes value um, uh, it takes value 0. Let me define another function sim uh, related looking function i 0, i 0 of t. i 0 of t is defined in this way, i 0 of t is equal to 0 if t is equal to 0 and it is minus infinity otherwise. So, how does this function look? This function looks like this, at 0 it is 0 and everywhere else its value is minus infinity. Okay. Now, these are obviously very ill behaved functions, they are taking value minus infinity um, uh, and so there is obviously a huge discontinuity and a discon uh, non differentiability here. But in terms of these functions you I by if I allow if I in, if I include minus infinity in my calculations, I can express an unconstrained problem in, ter, uh, in terms of the uh, I can express this uh, constrained problem as an unconstrained problem. So, how do I do that? So, 
notice that this optimization ok this problem let us call this uh, this this problem p, p is actually equivalent to minimizing f x. Now, what do I uh, what do I need to do here ok let me just change this a little bit I um, will just change this definition a little. Um, uh, this definition a little bit. Uh, so, uh, actually let me make a slight change in this definition because that will be convenient for us. So, let us instead of taking uh, uh, taking uh, defining i plus and i 0 in this sort of way, let me put these as using this as let me use this as plus infinity ok and also I will change the range. So, so, it is plus infinity so define i plus of so let us uh, so define these functions. So, define i plus of t as uh, is in this sort of way at so for t uh, for uh, so whenever t is is less than equal to 0, it is equal to 0 and when t becomes positive, it shoots to plus infinity right and i 0 of t is 0 when t is equal to 0 and whenever t is not equal to 0, it again shoots to plus infinity right. So, what what does this look like? What sort of function does this look like? Let us draw these here ok. So, i plus of t as I said it is for t less than equal to 0 it is for t less than equal to 0 it is 0 and for t greater than 0 this it shoots to plus infinity. So, this is my i plus of t and i 0 of t looks like this at 0 no problem it is equal to 0 and whenever t is not equal to 0 it shoots to plus infinity this is i 0 of t all right. Now, using these functions i plus and i 0 of t I can actually express express my uh, uh, I can express my uh, the the optimization problem p I can express in the following way I can I can write this as minimize f x plus summation lambda i i plus of g i of x oh uh, sorry I do not need the lambda So, using these uh, these these two functions i plus and i 0 of t I can express my optimization problem p in the following way. I can write it as minimize f x plus summation i plus of g i of x i going from 1 to m plus summation i 0 of h j of x. j equals 1 to p. So, now what does this do? What does this do? Well, it says that look at i look at the definition of i plus whenever uh, g i of x is less than equal to 0 ok i plus is equal to 0 all right. So, in that case this this term here the term here this this term actually is equal to 0 whenever g i of x is when uh, whenever g i of x is less than equal to 0. In particular when all the g i of x is are less than equal to 0 this entire summation uh, is actually equal to 0. Similarly, look at this term whenever h j of x is equal to 0 this term is equal to 0 right this term is 0. So, whenever uh, so whenever so in short if I take any x that is feasible for p then each of these terms 
the i plus terms as well as the i zero terms each of these terms should would end up being exactly would become exactly equal to zero so in short on the feasible region this new function that i have defined you know this new non differentiable infinity value taking function this function is on the feasible region is actually nothing but fx now outside the feasible region of p outside the feasible region of p what is what's this function well, if you are outside the feasible region, then it means that at least one of these terms is going to be not 0. So, at least these, at, uh, if either one of, the, at least one of these i pluses or one of these edges, uh, i zeros, one of these is going to be non 0. And when it is non 0, what value does it take? Whenever it is, if it is not 0, if it, these, these things are equal to plus infinity, remember. So, this they, they take value plus infinity. So, which means that once you are outside the feasible region, this this here, this, this expression here actually takes value plus infinity. So, what does this mean? It means that this, this function here, let me write it like this, this is equal to f x for all x feasible for p. and plus infinity otherwise. So, which means then if you have to minimize this, this if you have to minimize this, uh, this function that is that is mentioned here, if you are minimizing this particular function, what are you doing? You are effectively just minimizing f x over the feasible region of p, which is nothing but solving p itself, right. So, all, so this problem although you are minimizing this over all in an unconstrained way over all the entire over all of R n, what you are effectively doing is minimizing just f over the feasible region of p, right. So, that is that is actually an incredible uh, incredible simplification because uh, you 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 do not really need to care about the geometry uh, of what is happened in the constraints and so on. But it is also very deceptive because what you have done all that geometry has actually been absorbed into these complicated i 0 and i, uh, I plus functions which if you have to analyze you would need to uh, understand the geometry of, of the g i's and edges j's in the first place all right. Now, what has this got to do with the Lagrangian? So, if you look at this uh, the Lagrangian function here that is list, that is mentioned here. And if you look at the function that I am optimizing here, there is clearly a close resemblance because here is your f plus a summation of something, right, and uh, and um, some other terms uh, with uh, with the here they have inequality constraints and then here you have your equality constraints, right. And likewise here you have f plus something that involves inequality constraints plus something that involves equality constraints. So, now what is the connection between these two? That is something that we can see uh, we can see now. So, what I have you can think of uh, you can think of it this way that what I have done is actually in place of the i plus and in place of the i 0 I have put in some new functions here which are actually linear functions. So, in place of i plus of g i of x, what I have done is put in lambda i times g i of x. And li likewise, in place of um, i 0 of i 0 of um, h j of x, I have placed theta j of theta j times h j of x. Now, what is that, what is that actually doing? So, let us come back to this figure. See, remember i plus has this sort of form where for t less than 0, it takes value 0 and for t greater than 0, it, it shoots up to plus infinity. Now, if I want to approximate this linearly, in a, uh, 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 approximate, if I want to do a linear lower approximation to i plus of t, what sort of function can I choose? Well, the kind of functions that I can choose have to be of this sort of form. So, I have not drawn this very well, let me draw it again. So, the kind of function that I can choose has to be of this sort of form. So, what does this mean? What kind of form is this? It is a function whose slope is, is like this, it is positive. 
because if I take a function just just for uh, for uh, for uh, just for you to see, if I took a function whose slope is negative, then it would at some stage, okay, for some value of t, it would go above zero, above this line here, and then it will not be a lower approximation anymore. Right. So, you know, so for it to be a lower approximation, it is necessary that it must have a slope, a positive slope like this. Okay. It must have a positive slope like this. Moreover, for it to, uh, since it, it must have a positive slope, uh, I can look for the best lower approximation amongst the guys that have positive slope and it is clear that it, there is no use having an intercept here. So, uh, taking a lower approximation like this is of no use. I, I might as well get a better appro better lower approximation by taking the intercept to, by making sure it passes through the origin. In short, the intercept should be 0, right. So, so uh, it is it's, it, it's of no use taking this kind of uh, lower approximations. So, what we can take are, are approximations like this. We take a lower approximation that is, we take a lower approximation like this which is passing through the origin. Right. So, what does this mean? The, in short, a lower approximation to i, a lower linear approximation to i plus is takes the form, la, uh, uh, it takes the form lambda i times t. Okay. So, so this, this one here is a function of the form lambda i times t, okay, where lambda is, is lambda i is greater than or equal to 0. Likewise, a lower, let us look at now i0. So, if I have, to, if you look at i0, if i0 has this, uh, it, it takes pl a value plus infinity everywhere except for 0. So, if you want to take a lower approximation to this, now that you can take a linear function like this, you can also take a linear function like this. So, long as the intercept is, is, uh, is below 0, there is no problem right because everywhere else the value is plus infinity and you will be okay you will be all right so so long as the intercept on the y axis is negative you can continue you can take any kind of linear function but again it, if you want a tighter approximation if you want a better appro linear approximation why even bother with an intercept you might as well take a linear function that passes exactly through through the origin and that gives you that means that the function should be of the form theta j times t, either this or this or whatever, right. This, these are functions of the form theta j times t, where theta j is any, is any real number, right, okay. So, what does this mean? This, now these are both linear approximations, all right. So, which means that point wise, that means for every t, they actually take value less than the corresponding i plus or i 0 respectively, right. So, which means that if I look at what is here, if I look at what is in this optimization, what I just put in the bracket, that can always be lower bounded. If I, if I replace these, the i plus and i 0 by their respective linear approximations. So, I can get, I can get, this is always greater than equal to, uh, let me write it like this. So, p is the optimal value of p is, is always greater than equal to the minimum over x in R n of minimum or uh, infimum whatever uh, over x and rn i going from 1 to m j going from 1 to p theta j uh, times h j of x and what is and what's this this is actually nothing but the inf you are doing effectively the minimum of the lagrangian
and this is equal to your dual function. So, so long so the greater than equal to here this required that lambda is greater than equal to 0. Um, and any theta. So, for all lambda greater than equal to 0 and for any choice of theta, we have that we have that the optimal value of p is is greater than equal to this which is which is nothing but the dual function. And now, so what is the, what is effectively the dual function doing? The dual function is taking a linear approximation to these i 0 and i plus functions ok and uh, and and solve the dual function is the optimal value of that linear approximation so or in uh, in other words the Lagra what the lagrangian is actually doing is is taking a linear approximation to these i plus and i zero functions and the uh, the minimum of the lagrangian is basically the minimum value of this linear approximation and that is what we are calling the dual function and why is it a it is a function of what? It is a function of the slopes that you choose for making the linear approximation. So, as a function of these of the slopes you could have we, we remember we 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 said there is no need to take the intercept and that is why we took the intercept as 0 and we uh, and we got these linear functions passing through the origin. But we did not say anything about the slope. The slope is up uh, is still up for grabs it can it is still to be decided. So, as a function of the slope the gap between uh, the the actual optimization and and uh, or uh, uh, and and this can can still be fine tuned the actual approximation uh, the actual optimization and the lin and its linear under approximation can still be fine tuned in any case the linear under approximation is giving is is capture is captured by the dual function which gives it to you in is a function of the slope so, maximizing the dual function, so maximizing this which is your dual problem, maximizing this which is your dual problem is basically asking for what does this ask for? It is asking for the best linear under approximation. It is basically asking for the best linear under approximation to p. So, in this class of under uh, uh, in this class of approximations you can what is the best you can do right. So, you you so, so the sequence is you have you create your you write your actual problem like this you write your actual problem like this create a family of linear approximations using this using this logic you look for the best value of the minimum of those linear approximations and then you ask okay what is the uh, what's the best i can do amongst amongst my entire family what's the largest value of my uh, what's the tightest uh, lin um, uh, lower bound that i can get using this linear approximation all right so that is what that is what the dual problem is doing. Now, this if you think about it this way, it is actually nothing short of a miracle that that in the case of linear programming, the primal and dual actually end up being equal. So, the, the optimal values of the primal and dual being equal end up being equal, which means what I mean by that is see you see how grossly inaccurate this entire linear approximation is. So, what you wanted to actually approximate was this sort of function something that is 0 here and shoots to plus infinity after that. Likewise, what you wanted to approximate here was this function that is plus infinity everywhere and 0 here and you are approximating it by what so, uh, an extremely benign function you are just taking a linear function like this. And then you are saying ok amongst this class of approximations which is the one that is giving me the best possible value that is by that is what you are solving by using, solving the dual problem right and it is incredible it is actually really incredible that you can in fact get get back the same value as of the primal. That means, that there will be no gap between this one which involved these i plus and i 0 functions and this problem 
that has been formed by looking for the best value of the linear approximation. Okay. So, in the case of linear programming that is exactly what we get. We the linear programming duality theorem taught us that the primal optimal and the dual optimal are uh, whenever there is a solution to the primal there is a solution to the dual and the values are equal and that is what we are finding here. Okay. So, this sets the stage now for convex convex optimization duality and uh, so we will do that uh, we will do that in the next lecture.